everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, we are wet weather driving yet again. And I actually wanted to use today to talk about uh, my wet weather driving and some rain driving techniques that you can use uh, because I got inspired from the British GP that happened this weekend. Um, and I just love driving in the rain as my OG subscribers do know. So yeah, a couple things that I just wanted to go over today. We will enjoy our lovely little Civic in the rain. It's actually coming down quite hard right now, um, which is a great uh, teaching lesson for a lot of the different techniques that I have that I've learned. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. Right off the bat, a very common misconception is that wet weather driving is not much different than dry driving. This was something that I firmly thought when I was a teenager and I got my license and I told my parents the same thing. Wow, it's really coming down right now. Look at this. This is a full on downpour. We are right in the middle of the storm. So this is obviously extreme wet conditions. You would never race in conditions like this because this is just out of control. Yeah, this is, uh, oh my gosh, I can't even see right now. <laughs> Look at this, holy shit. I'm in like the middle of a hurricane right now. This is crazy. Well, I was planning on making a video talking about how to drive in the rain, but this is a lot more intense than that. These are not the kind of conditions I was talking about. Driving on water is a lot different than driving on pavement, if you haven't figured that out. Which means it's much, much, much more slippery, which is why I'm being super careful right now, because water is pooling up on the road like crazy, and you pretty much never, ever, ever want to drive in those pools of water if you're trying to go fast. Like right here, just avoid that. For those of you who are new to cars, there's something called hydro locking your engine, which is when water gets in the air tunnels and goes into the actual cylinder housing and into the chamber. Um, that is never ever a good thing. So that's why if your car is not built for it with like a snorkel or a rally car or something like that, you always want to avoid driving into giant puddles like that because you will sink and hydro lock your engine. So it's not a very good thing to do in a super low car like this, always a great idea to avoid giant puddles. Never great to be running straight through them. Now the other thing to mention is this is actually a great teaching point as we're following this car right here. You could see, well I don't know how well you could see it on the video, but I could see it in person. They're leaving a track and that's where the water is getting pushed out from. Now if we were racing, sometimes better to be following that, sometimes not. And I'll explain that. So the reason on the street, hang on, let me show you here. You can see how little grip the road has. Like if I just take the wheel, like my car is just swinging already. It's got, it's just sliding. So the reason that you follow somebody's tracks in the road is because they're just pushing water away. And your road tires or your street tires are meant to be able to drive in both conditions. And they handle both conditions well. So that means you can follow somebody's dry line. You can follow where the water is being kicked off and you'll have a good amount of grip because your tires are meant to deal with that. On a racetrack, it's not so simple. It's a lot different. Racing tires are obviously usually slicks. And then when you're on a rain tire, they have tread in them, but it's still the slick compound on top. It just handles colder temperatures a little better. But what happens is those tires have marbles. And as you run around the track, you tear off the old rubber and it creates marbles on the track. It's like a pool of little black specks. And what happens with those little black specks is in the rain, those black specks mix with the water and it becomes extremely slick because it's not pavement with water. It's pavement with rubber on top of it, then water on top of it. And that is an absolute no-no to drive on. So you'll see a lot of the time in a race, uh, you know, whether it be Formula One drivers or GT3, whatever it is, where they're racing in the rain, they have very strange lines. They're kind of all over the place on the track. And that is because they're avoiding those areas that have pooled up with the marbles and they're trying not to run on that because it's extremely, extremely slick. As of right now, I am experiencing extremely slick conditions. These are like flooding conditions here. This is actually, it's raining super, super hard here. 
um, and my car is like right there it's sliding around all over the place so I'm being super super careful right now trying not to push the limits really at all because um, of course we don't have traction control in this car if you guys don't know that so things are a little sketchy when you're driving conditions like this but this is always great practice because not only is it hard to see but it's hard to control as well because I'm just in a front wheel drive car with these little puddles in the road you're being like pushed into these puddles and being snaked around without you know obviously wanting to do that so it's a little hard to control but this is absolutely nuts here crazy crazy conditions so on the racetrack obviously you're trying to avoid those um those lines where the marbles have pulled up and everything but another thing you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the um the tires cold because those when the track transitions from a wet track to a dry track there's this in-between period where you'll see the track is damp but the area of where the cars have been running pushing the water off of the road is completely dry sometimes they'll dip off of that dry line and go onto a full-on wet patch and they will drive in that wet patch and so say for example on a straight right in the corners they'll be running in the um, dry areas and they'll run on the dry section of the track but then on the straight they'll completely dip offline and they'll go right into the water and they'll run in the water along the street and the only reason for that is to just cool off the tires and get the temperatures a little lower because those rain tires are meant to work in the rain obviously they're not meant to be run on the dry so if you just consistently run it on a dry line it overheats the tire and the tire doesn't work as well it starts to grain and grain is when um like uh, it starts to wear faster than it should uh, and, and it wears in a weird pattern it's a little hard to explain that but um obviously you want to avoid those things so that's why driving in the rain is a little bit of a tricky thing because you're actually just trying to essentially find where the grip is but keep the tires cold at the same time this road only gets worse every time i drive it holy cow yeah this car is actually still acting up a little bit i don't really know what's going on um it's not that significant it's just a little bit here and there it kind of reverts to its old symptoms so i think i'm just going to replace the o2 sensor because um i think that it, it's just not reading right in the exhaust for whatever reason i don't know it's been running fine but then it'll just revert to its old symptoms and i think it has something to do with the exhaust not getting a proper reading with the o2 sensor and so it doesn't really know what to do when it's like malfunctioning like that it could be a slew of things of whether you know how the o2 sensor was installed if it was put in like too close and it's like way too sensitive i don't know it could be a million different things but for the most part it doesn't really happen all that often which is why i just don't like really care about it all that much and those of you know i don't really drive this car extreme distances or anything like that i just drive it around town for like maximum 20 minutes because you know there's no point in spending a bunch of money if you don't really have to so now you can see the road has transitioned from that extreme wet to kind of the half wet conditions right now i would still say this is actually probably still full wet so you would still run rain tires in this situation if it were a racetrack but um, the difference being now that you can see the water is not pooling up on the road anymore so that means you can run um, more aggressive but I just wanted to talk about um, what I want to talk about was the grip levels in the corners tires in the rain are significantly significantly less gripped up than they are in the dry so if I were to take this around a corner and I were to take the wheel and just like do this it's literally just going to slide across the top of it so that means two things are eliminated in rain driving number one heavy braking you cannot brake super hard in the rain because you are if you even get close to locking up the tires you are literally just going to slide across it like it's ice and there are many many examples of this happening on a racetrack now the other thing is really sharp cornering on a racetrack in the rain because what happens is if you take the wheel on a really sharp corner and again you do what i say where you just very very aggressively flick the wheel 
the car is literally just going to slide across the surface because there's no friction. The tire doesn't have anything to grab. It is literally just going to slide across water. And so that's why when you own a car, say for example like this, that, oh, that was a terrible voice crack. <laughs> when you own a car like this, that say, doesn't have traction control, uh, no stability control, nothing like that, you learn how to control those situations because there's nothing stopping that from happening. It literally happens all the time. And so that's really all the points I wanted to go over this, in this video. I just wanted to make a quick explanation of driving in the rain. So just to review everything, again, racetracks are very different, but on the street, follow people's little road divots uh, that they make, like those little wet lines where they're blowing off the water. Follow those because your tires can handle it. Um, again, visibility is decreased, so just always be aware of that. Whether it be for you or for someone else, always just be aware of limited visibility. And just be aware of the lack of grip. You know, you can obviously won't be able to turn as fast. Um, and I would say one of the most important things is to understand how braking works in the rain. You cannot brake super heavy in the rain. You have to understand where the level of friction is. Uh, you don't obviously have to like know all the details of how to brake in the rain and stuff like that if you're not a racing driver, but just be aware. You're not gonna be able to brake as late in the rain as you would through any other situation. So it's very important to keep a note when you're doing that type of stuff that you should not be driving all out in the rain. You have to take some stuff back. But that is going to do it for today's video. I am going to get a sandwich now because that was the whole reason I actually left my house. Sorry for the lack of videos, guys. I was actually just spending a lot of time with my friends and my family over the course of 4th of July, just enjoying, um, you know, time hanging out with them and stuff like that. I'm sure you guys can understand. But we are back in it now. We are returning to our lovely YouTube channel, getting back in the rhythm. So that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all of you new subscribers. If you haven't already, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.